All right, we are now live, guys. Uh, my guest today is uh, James Sweck. Is that how you James say it? Right. All right. Um. Well, I um, he's my guest today, and actually, I met him. Interesting story is I we met each other at um, the West Branch Michigan Bigfoot Conference, and uh, we talked and stuff, and actually. Uh, at the end of the conference, he actually we actually met up and went back to the spot where I was camping at and sat out there. And anyways, um, how did you get into bigfooting? Let's just start right out with it. All right. So uh, on January twenty sixth, uh, two thousand eighteen, I decided to email Cliff Brackman just because I was bored. I don't know. I was probably watching one of those Animal Planet Bigfoot shows. You're okay, so you're watching it, yeah, finding Bigfoot and stuff. Yeah, and I just asked him where are the best places to go in Michigan, basically. Yeah. And he sent me an email like three days later and told me to get in contact with this person. But I emailed him; he never got in contact with me. So on that same day that I did email him, I went on Facebook and joined my first Bigfoot group. And it was Michigan's researchers. Uh, hold on, what's it called here? There's a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Let me find the exact one. And they're all good. The Michigan Bigfooters Research and Bigfoot Sightings. And only had like a thousand members when I joined. So mm -hmm. I I posted in there and asked people where I should go, and I got a lot of comments. One of which was uh, Phil Shaw. And he told me yeah. to come up there and see him in West Branch and do a camp out or something like that. And he talked to me about uh, where to look and stuff since he has a bunch of reports. And yes, I got another comment good. from uh, William uh, Stowards. And yeah, he my other me, guest I was on, yeah. Uh, he, he told me a couple of spots of where to go, but I wasn't 100% going there because he told me the dangers uh, and some stories what happened to people there. So. I yeah, and it's uh, northern Michigan, so it's more wild and all that. And uh, so I took up Phil's offer first. And me and my dad went up there, and we had a good time, did a camp out. I did some calls and stuff, but I got nothing in return. But it was still fun. So yeah, exactly. exactly. I just, after I did that, um, I think I just kept going out there around, like, Metro parks around uh, Eastern Michigan, just around my area. I didn't want to go too far. And I think I got in contact with Chuck Sutherland as well, and he told me some places to go as well. Yep. And, yeah. So, um, how long before um, you went to the conference and we met? Well, that was that was like another year. <laughs> oh, so another year. So, uh, you were doing your own research for the whole year and stuff. Basically. Yeah, basically. I was just going to parks and getting evidence and of structures and stuff. And so when find. was your first encounter with um, – because that was before the um, conference, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll do this one first. Uh, yeah, yep, go ahead. So I got invited to go out with uh, William and Chuck to, uh, to Bill's location up in northern Michigan. And because he said he found this teepee and he wanted to – he invited Chuck because he's like his one of his invest researchers he goes with a lot out there. But yep. since I'm like a younger person, Chuck invited me and he's like he's got people like wanting to pay for people to go out there and do stuff with him. But he invited me just because I was young and I knew it he wanted me to get into it, I guess. I I don't know exactly why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I went out there and we we camped for a couple days, and we saw the teepee. Uh, well, Bill was the first one to see the teepee, and he did it on live stream, and he was so amazed by it. So when me and Chuck and his younger son went out there, we were walking. Actually, no, it was before. Uh, we went to the teepee, and it was like really hard to get to. We, there was a bunch of down trees and everything blocking the path to get there. And when we got to the teepee, uh, Chuck was, I think Chuck found them first, but there was a lot of footprints around the teepee, just big, big footprints. 
and uh, I I was like not a hundred percent a believer, you know, you know, like when you think you're a believer of it, but you're not actually a believer. I was like kind of scared when I saw those footprints. <laughs> oh, really? Right? You're just basically getting into it, right? First year and stuff. Yeah. And so they got some casting material and on our way back, actually, wait. Yeah, on our way back to cast them, uh, we heard rock clacking on the left side of us. And there's nobody out there. It's literally in the middle of the woods. And yeah. if you're out there, you're either hunting or like scouting to hunt or you're crazy. I, I don't know. So, right, you're, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you guys were walking back to um, the structure when yeah, you, heard the, cast, you heard the rock crack. Yeah. Yep. And so you uh, you cast to the tracks, right? Yep. And that's uh, that's the one that uh, Bill has, right? Well, we actually got multiple. Okay. I actually got one of them too. I think, Sweet. yeah, yeah, not from that specific area, but I think, actually, yeah, I think I did get one from that. Okay. Uh, we we also found a handprint inside of the TP, and it looked like there was another impression there too, but we we didn't cast that, or if we did cast it, it broke. Right, it, it is hard. Yeah, you get you need you need and a thumbprint as well, or something like that. That's awesome. And plus, you know, handprint. yeah, practicing casting is very important too because you're going to get better each and every time. So, uh, describe yeah. the cheapy structure. Is it you know big? Is it small? Like, what what um, what what makes it to you seem like abnormal that a person is not? Doing? It's seven to eight feet tall, out of my memory, because I know it was taller than me, mm -hmm. and I'm six foot, so. Uh, it was made of, uh, trees and like broken, like, hold up. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's just, it's all right. Uh, the tree, it was made of trees and the roots, it was like the roots were pulled out of the tree and the ground, right? Yeah. Yeah. The ground. And there was also other trees that were bended inside of it that were still alive. And there were big logs as well that were made of it as well, which people were saying that could have been hunters, but it was literally in the middle of a two track. So for it to be a hunter, there would be only one line of direction and that would just be stupid to make. Right. And, you know, uh, it was in the middle of a two track, you said, or, or a path? Yeah, two track. Hmm. I don't think hunters would do... Uh do that actually you know it's a way of traveling for uh, other people to get through you know so yeah because it'd only be one line of sight so there'd be no reason to do that and okay so, okay bill also said that someone told him it could have been like teenage kids but just having fun but he said some of those logs are like really heavy to even move that it would take two to three people to even lift them so there'd be no reason to do it Right, it takes some strength to do some of the stuff, especially with the root ball connected. So, yeah, it looked like they were just torn out of the ground. Like, and there was actually we we found two impressions right next to like the tree that was ripped out of the ground, and it was just like, wow, <laughs> takes some power. Okay, yeah. so uh, go on from there. Then I know you guys um, you went back up there at some point. After yeah, that. We, went, we went back to go get the prints and we came back another way and on the way we were going to pick them up I think me and someone else saw something black cross across the path but we didn't know if it was a bear or not we were like pretty far away I had my camera and I was filming mm -hmm. except I didn't get a good clear shot of it so it would be impossible to know what it was I did get something black but you can't tell what it is it, it's too much to right say. And so, it could have been a bear, but once we got there, we we didn't see anything, so it'd be it was hard to say. Yeah, there's black bear up there and stuff. Yeah, so it could have been a black bear, but you know. Okay, so uh, you guys keep going, and um, isn't there another time you guys went up there, or? Oh yeah, I'm getting that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, I I I don't. I know you have some. I know you guys went up there a few times. I don't know all the all the stories myself. Yeah, That's why. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, we got the prince. Went back to camp. I don't think much happened that night, but we did get a. I think that rock clack you know, was one of the things. So right, the rock clack. Check my yep. notes here. Uh, yeah, the size and the depths of the footprints though were like really big. It was inside the moss too. That's where they were found. Mm-hmm. And we tried to make those impressions and our footprints did not do like any comparison to the ones that were found. So I wouldn't say yeah, human. Some, but yeah. It takes some weight. Do you, in your opinion, what do you think it was a bear? I mean, obviously a bear's not making a structure like that, but. Wait, what, what was the question? The imprints were they, cause you, you guys casted them. Would they, do they look like a bear print? Would no, they, they, they were toes. Toes. and Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Um, this was in like I think September though, so I don't think it could have been a human because the weather, cold. Right, why is the person out there barefoot? You know, yeah, uh, doesn't make uh, sense. Also, the way we came, one of the ways we came in, it looked like there was blockades of like trees in the way to get to the structure as well. So it looked like if you were in a vehicle, you couldn't get to the structure all the way. Right, it was on the other thing. Yeah, or two track. Uh, all right. And then after that happened, I came up another week, a week after that, just me and Bill, we went out there and, uh, we just, we walked around for a bit. All right. Here, I'll, I'll start the story of my first sighting. All right. Uh, we were walking down a two track on the opposite side of the structure that we found. And everything was fine. We weren't feeling anything weird. It was dusk, I'd say. The sun was coming down, so the visibility wasn't that great. But it was still visible. Um, Let me think. (laughs) It's okay. I know you're a little nervous. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, We were walking down the two track, and then Bill stops and says, Hey, you see that thing up there? It looks like a person. And I'm like, I, I could see something, but I didn't know what it was completely. My vision's not that good distance-wise. So okay. <laughs> he saw it, and it moved across the path and into the woods. And what I saw was a shadow of it. All right, so it was black and stuff? And... Yeah, it was about like 50 yards away probably. That's per- fairly close, yeah. Yeah. So um, you guys walked over the spot, I'm assuming, and – yeah, we, we kept on walking down there, and we walked to the exact spot. We didn't see anything. We we're looking around, so we just kept walking. And I'd say maybe 50 feet after we walked past that, we heard a knock right in the same exact spot where we saw it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. And then we saw this structure on the left side of the chew track. We we're looking at it, and all of a sudden, in the distance, we hear two long howls. Pretty, they were pretty far, but we could hear them. Hmm. And we're like getting scared and stuff. And we're like, oh, we should get a, uh, we should get out of here and get back to the truck. Yeah, yeah, because you know, we're yeah. we're pretty far out, and nobody's out there too, besides yeah. maybe ETVers, because we did hear those in the night. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, people are cruising their four by fours and ATVs and all that uh, all day and all and most of the night actually. Uh, so. But, you know, what you had seen, you, you said you seen something black and it walked across the road and then you had heard a knock and, well, bears don't knock on trees like that, right? Yeah. They, don't, they don't rock clack. So we start here heading back and we, on the the left side, I we hear like thumps, like, and it was just weird. I, I don't know how else to describe that. Did it sound like uh, thumps on the ground? Yeah, like okay. something was walking or something else. I don't know. They were, I heard like there's, they go up in trees sometimes and when they come down, they make those thuds. Yeah, thuds would be right. Yeah. Uh, so we're about, I don't know, uh, 100 feet maybe from the truck of where we parked. And on the right side of the two track, I hear like, I don't know, what, how do I describe it? it? Sound like somebody was talking that wasn't Bill. 
Mm. It was weird. Okay, did it? Was it uh, any words or was it syllables or what, uh, did, what, what did it sound like in your best? Uh, uh, I I don't know. I I can't remember what it was, but it was something. I, I thought it was Bill, and it wasn't because he wasn't talking. So, right, he's and there's right. nobody Bye. out there that we know of. Right, I think that you know. Obviously, I don't think Bears are doing all that, and it sounded like you got guys got followed out. And that's just in the same area where Bill has got activity, right? Or yeah. Close, yeah. So, it's yeah. all right. All right, yep. So we get back to the truck, and we're just we just sitting there for a little bit, just listening. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I got some of this on audio. We I got some knocks and whistles we heard. We heard yeah, a knock yeah. right as we got back in the truck. And we sit there for a long time. And we just keep hearing like things moving around us and just weird noises as well. And what else happened? Uh, to the right of us, right around where I heard that noise that sounded like a person, we hear these, uh, I hear this scream that sounded like a girl, like dying. Wow. It scared me. It scared me. <laughs> I'm sure it would be shocking to hear that. So that's all happening within. And right after that happened, we I got two more whoop-like calls that happened in the same area. There you go. Yeah. You know, it, and it sounds like, honestly, you guys got followed out. And uh, they were doing stuff to uh, – I assumed to try to intimidate you out of the area or see yeah, what you would which do. Which we did. <laughs> which you did, and it worked. So success. Yeah. We uh, we started the car, and we we went around for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And when we came back, right as we turned the car off, there was a whistle. Really? Yeah, I got an audio. Yeah, I know you have some stuff uh, from that time, and uh, it is interesting for sure. You know, it's not – it's not people doing it, you know. You would easily tell if a person's close by trying to stump and stuff, you know. We're not quiet when we walk through the woods, especially or run or try to hide from people. I mean, and a bear's not doing that. You know, a deer, yeah. a deer's definitely, definitely doing it, right? So, okay, so uh, hold on. How, how, how long, before you go any farther, how long are it when you guys seen it? So you got to the car and then drove off. How long was that stretch of time? Oh, jeez. Uh, maybe 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, that's a lot of activity in 15 minutes of you guys seeing something cross maybe, the road. Maybe a little bit more. I don't, I don't know exactly. Maybe more. 15, 20, 30 minutes even. Yeah. That, that's Because the walk was a little far, so maybe, maybe 20 minutes then. I would we, say we went like a half a mile, so. Right, yeah, I I would say you got easily followed out and stuff. It's it's all the same traits that people have um, witnessed and and just, well, you know, yeah. Bill is convinced. I know you're convinced for the most part. Yeah, I was thinking that uh that that shadow I saw. It wasn't a shadow, but it was actually the creature, because sometimes your brain makes things like appear different right. because it doesn't want to see the truth that is a good point you yeah know. and because like the shadow is also like two times bigger than it appears so right and you're seeing something you know going through the woods and they're they blend in good and you know when you see it move and stuff you know it's it's an experience you got you know you have a shocking experience you know i think you're kind of in awe for a second and yeah and plus, with that happening around you, we, you know, did you think it was a bear? Did you, I mean, did you kind of know, like, what was going on in your head on that walk back when you keep hearing this and then another one? And then well, I wasn't like, really sure what it was until we heard the knock. And then I was like, yeah. <laughs> then you're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> it's a good experience. That is, I mean, and for just starting out, I mean, that's, you know, a big leap. I would say for the most people, most people spend their, you know, decades researching and never get anything, you know? Yeah. 
It was pretty cool. Okay, so um, any all right, so you drove around and then you heard another whistle when you got or a whistle when you got out. Did you have any more activity after that on that day? There might have been. I don't remember though. Okay. Okay, and then did you okay. have? Okay, so you went back home and did you, uh, did you have to go back up there again before the conference or? Uh, I didn't go up there for like a little bit. I don't think. Okay. I might have went up there in uh. When was that? I don't remember. Wait. Yeah, I didn't go back up there. Yeah. Until okay. like next year. Yeah. Right. And uh, we had met at the conference and it was a great conference. Uh, Phil Shaw uh, hosted it and uh, Cliff Brackman was there and um, uh, Bob Deagle and uh, there's a, a bunch of people I'm forgetting, but it was a good conference and it was my first one. And uh, Chuck was there. Bill was there. You know, I met a lot of good people, met you. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we, I took you back to where I was at. What did you think where I was doing? I think you were insane. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. road was just, I don't know how you even got back there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit of a struggle, but I, I pushed the truck to kind of its limits to get back into the spot where I thought, yeah, they've got to be there. And uh, it was wild, it was, right. you know. So, uh, anyways, we had a good time. Um, when did you uh, have your next experience? Uh, oh, that, here, let uh, me what do, do – Or whatever you want to go with. Right yeah, now. I'll just do whatever. I, okay. Yeah, go ahead. So, I was on the Bigfoot page, the one I said earlier, mm -hmm. and some guy posted, hey, I got uh, evidence in this area. If anyone wants to come up here and explore it with me, and I was like, "Hey, I'll come. <laughs> I got nothing better to do." There you go. And awesome. His name was Chad Hunkin. Hunkins. I'm pretty sure that's his name. Yeah, and he was a nice dude. We went out there, and he brought his buddy that was more of a believer, and they were telling me some stories that are happening in the area. It was mm -hmm. over in a uh, Vassar. I think that's what's called. Some small town over there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, when we got there, it was like this hunting area, I guess you could call it. I don't know. They were, they said they had some stories out there of people hunting and seeing things. And we we're just walking and seeing these weird structures and stuff. And all of a sudden, we start getting footprints. We start finding footprints, like a bunch of them. And my uh, friend bought, he brought his tape measure and we start measuring them. And they're like pretty big. Why is this not working? It's all good. I know you got all your notes written down. And... So, and, uh, yeah, they, they were bigger than my feet. So it was just like really weird. And it was March. So it was still pretty cold out there. There was still snow on the ground. So I'm not 100% sure what it was, but yeah. Interesting. I guess. Uh, the, what about the, the place around it, the, the habitat around? What do you think? Um, there was swamp. It was a little bit of swampy and a little bit of non-swampy. Okay, so swamps, which is a general good sign because uh, it's places where people don't go. Hunters uh, will go in a swamp, but and we found not too deep. Yeah, and these there was like weird structures we were finding. Like there was this bent over like structure with like pine needles and stuff in it, and then like tree branches woven inside of it. Like it looked like a little hunting blind. So I guess a hunter could have made it, but we were probably pretty far in the woods, so we weren't sure. And it's always good to be, you know, skeptical of things, and like, you know, like that. I mean, yeah. Obviously, when it's something a human can't do, like in the first case of the structure, where there's big root balls and big logs and stuff, you know, then you, you can yeah. Pretty and much we found that person. we found like groups of footprints and like mud piles too, hmm. and we were thinking maybe it was like a family that was out there. Right. It, well, it was kind of weird, the area. What would the person be doing right there? I I don't know. <laughs> right. You it's know, you got to cool, think, though. you know, common sense. What's, what, what is a person doing right here doing this? You know, you got you to gotta think it out. So, all right, go on. I think that was the last place I went, and then it was the conference, it looks like. Oh, okay. Yeah. What would you think about the conference? Oh, uh, it was a pretty good conference. I think Cliff was doing a pretty good job himself. 
I, that was yeah. the main reason I went, because I could meet him. <laughs> yeah, and we met him actually. We we had uh, started talking before, and then uh, you know we had we got our time to talk with him one on one. He gave us his time. It was very generous and respectful. I showed him my stuff, and he gave me his opinion, and it was very it was good. And what did you think of him? I think he was a pretty good guy. And yeah. uh, on finding Biff, Bigfoot, he's. He's pretty much the same person, <laughs> except he's, he liked more. He likes to have lots of evidence to back up everything. Yeah, I, you know, he goes. His approach is very good, and uh, he's a stand-up guy. Like he'll, he, he literally talked to you like you know you're his friend. He gives you his time. He was very generous. Um, yeah, it was a good concert uh, conference <laughs> uh, by uh, Phil Shaw. Shout out to him. He's doing another one uh, in April, I think. So. You can look it up at uh, BigfootDiscoveryDays.com or Facebook page. I believe that's what it's under, right? Yeah. Or if you go to uh, the Michigan groups you should, or look up Phil Shaw in the groups, you should find some of his posts. So uh, – go ahead. No, you go. <laughs> oh. Okay. So um, after the conference, did you have anything else or was it when me and you started It was out? when me and you started going out. Okay. So – why don't you? Uh, you want? All right, I guess we went out. We went out to this place, and the first day, we went out there. I kind of gave James a little test, you know, because I, I don't really work with people that too much, and uh, he was an up and comer, right? So I kind of gave him a little test, and I took him out and we drug him through some wild stuff, and I ended up we ended up crossing the swamp where it was. Uh, I was sinking down to my waist, and James is. He's light and he's up on these little islands on sticks walking through the swamp and it was a good time. That was uh, what do you think of that area? Uh I thought the area was really good. The swamp we went through. I I wouldn't do it again, but <laughs> <laughs> I was kind you, of forced to, I think, but <laughs> Yes, yes. I, I you passed the test, man. Uh, it was it was it was great. Also because the only way back was going all the way around, and I didn't really yeah. want to do that. Yeah, yeah. And then at certain, at one point, you know, it was easier just to keep going forward than to go backwards in the swamp. So, and anyway, so at that point, I knew, yeah, James James is in it. He's a good guy. And uh, so the second time we went out there, what you want to explain what what was going on, what we were finding? Uh. I guess we went to a, a different area of the park, the opposite side, and we just went on our own and I think started looking. We would went on top of this cliff area. Yeah, there's about a bunch of ridges. Just following the stream, basically, and finding structures and stuff. I think that's what we did. Yeah, we were finding some interesting stuff, uh, and then we actually started uh, hearing things, and then... Uh... Yeah, we were over by the bridge, I think, in the stream, and you're doing your, putting water in your canteen. I heard like this weird thing. I don't remember. Right. It it's weird. Right. We were hearing stuff, and then, you know, at first we're just like, okay, yeah. But then we went off trail. And uh, that was the we, third time. Unless you're talking about something else. Oh, maybe I. No, I thought it was the second time, actually. We only went out there, um, I think twice, right? Well, we went out there three times. Did we? Yeah. yeah. I guess the second one wasn't. Oh, we checked the uh, first. Uh, that's when we went and actually discovered a bunch of tree breaks. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. And the third time, we went back to the same spot, check, rechecked those, and then we had the encounters. Okay. Jumping ahead of itself, I guess. I'm a little yeah. excited. <laughs> so, yeah. we Okay. The second day, we um, discovered these... Um, one interesting was a broken tree branch that didn't belong to this other one. It was in a crotch of a tree. It was just stuck there, and I couldn't figure out where it came from. That's That was the the second trip, basically, and we thought we had heard some stuff. And Basically, we, that's when we found this good area where I had thought, man, this is this bad hanging out. So that third time, okay, we walked up to that spot. We had checked that same branch we discovered the second time we went up there and then uh we went off trail i wanted to go off off this trail more into a 
a section where I thought, yeah, this is where they're going to be going. And we went and uh, found the uh, tur uh, broken over tree that got looked like it got struck by lightning because it was. Oh uh, yeah, 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 right there. Okay, right there. That's right. We have, it was burnt. It was all black and burnt and blew apart and fell over. And it looked like something had uh, actually dug up underneath where the root ball was up and it was digging underneath. Uh, and any animal would have been using that as a shelter to get out of, uh, you know, rain and rain. But it was, it was interesting. So uh, I think right about there is when we started getting some things yeah. happening. There was a, a ridge above that that I started, like, hearing stuff, something moving up there. And then yep. I think like a little, maybe like less than a minute later, there was a knock coming on the opposite direction of that, that we captured as well. Yep. Because uh, we were filming and, uh, and we keep walking along. So, and you can watch this as, um, it's on his, your channel, it's a uh, swift rage. And then under my channel, it would have been um, multiple Bigfoot encounters. And then there'd be different stuff like, uh, yeah, along the ridge through the swamp, and I got a playlist of Bigfoot if you want to check it out. <laughs> right, he has it, and uh, some, some good stuff. And it was, um, anyways, continue on. We kept going, and oh, I, I don't remember what happened. Didn't you say like something was moving in the swamp? Yeah, we were going to the swamp because uh, it was really hot out. It was, and uh, I was, t I just talked to uh, Mark Zasky actually, and he was doing stuff where they're. You know, in the summer, it's hot out there, you know, in the swamp and cooling off. So I was, you know, out there and thinking, you know, they're, they're doing that here too, man, because it's hot. It's, you know, they're going to be hot and sweaty and sticky. So we were going going to the swamp and then kept hearing stuff. And actually, if you watch it, when we, could, when we were hearing it, we didn't know what was going on. We kept hearing stuff. And we, I was like, hey, did you hear that? They're like, yeah. And I was like what it sounded like to you and you were like it was, it was, mm. now and when i captured it and boosted and stuff it's it's literally a grunt and we started capturing whoops and stuff it sounded like it was all around us what was the feeling you were getting because at some point you were you got freaked out i wasn't bit. like em i think i wasn't emf'd but i was just freaking out because we're in the middle of the woods like really far away from anything <laughs> yeah we start having these things escalate the more we keep going deeper along this ridge and at one point, I didn't capture it, but it sounded like an orangutan whoop, like something off I got, I think I might have kept I don't remember. I, mm -hmm. I might have got it, but I'm not sure. Right. If I, I did, was, it was because we were talking at the same time it happened. So it might have yeah, been. Because we were just trying to, you know, what's going on? And I, I knew, I think. And, at, and then there was a time where uh, basically we had something thrown at us. Yeah, but before that happened, though, there was a scream on top of the ridge we heard as well. Yes, yes. There was a lot of things that happened. If you guys yeah. back in there, you guys can watch it. I'm actually, after this, I'm going to drop the whole, uh, it might be a two-parter, but the whole, the whole basically, the when we were out there from start to finish. I'll, what you are? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I posted, I posted the uh, encounters, what was going on in each little section. But in this one, uh it's a whole, it's actually the whole thing. Um, kind of. So. All right. But it shows everything. Everything's not boosted. So you guys might have a harder time hearing it, but you, it's the, it's our expedition basically is what I made. And if you watch the actual individual videos on both of our pages, that's with the boosted audio and things like that. So just putting that out there for everyone. But yeah, yeah. We, and then we had something thrown at us and I was literally filming and I'm explaining because I'm I'm excited. James is uh, James is having fun. We're both having fun. It was it was it was awesome. I was getting my mind blown actually with the activity, and I was just got my GoPro and I was just hoping, praying like a Christmas boy, at Christmas that I was getting stuff, and I, I did. I think awesome. I, mean, was, I still I'm just blown away by it. But I'm filming, and you can hear something being thrown, and we are reacting and I slow it down in the videos because you know James and our, our eyes are just moving we hear it and you know you, I think you point a little bit and it crashes just, just, just and are you know we're freaked out it was I'm hard to say if something was thrown or if something like was moving uh, it sounds like something's thrown 
I've done a lot of, I've, I've, I've gone through it so many times. <laughs> no, it's okay. That's okay. Yeah. I, it was something for sure there. It, it moves rapidly. It sounds like something crashing through. Do, 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 do. You know, in my opinion, it's something. Thrown. So, uh, uh, anyways, what, what did you think about that? What, when that happened, because it was one thing after another, what, what was in your head? Because I know you. Well, I, I obviously knew it was Bigfoot, but I was scared. <laughs> yeah, at that point, it was like, okay, this is not a person, right? We had seen people hiking when we were on the trail. It wasn't a person followed us, was it? Was it a bear, uh, a deer, or a squirrel? But, you know. Oh, you're asking me what it was? Yeah, yeah. When your opinion, you know, is it a squirrel? Is it a bear? Is it another which, which one? All of it. All of it? That Obviously, whole, no. That whole, when we started getting interactions I all mean, the way we up. We were like a mile or two away from any trails. So if there was a person out there, they would have to have been doing like what we were doing, basically. Except for more quieter and sneaking up on them. Yeah. Just and I'm staying I'm out of our sure. sight. Well, actually, there have been bears in the area, right? There's, yeah, over the years, they're very rare here in Lower Michigan. You know, I, I have the habit of saying there's no, there's no black bears here in Lower Michigan, this far south. But there are, every once in a while, they're very rare. They come down, and it actually would make, you know, the news if you, if we found or took a picture of a black bear where we're at, you know, it would make the local news. So they are pretty rare. Uh, we, we haven't seen any bear footprints, I'm pretty sure. Anything, though, that would have made it a bear, I guess you could say? If a bear, a black bear is that close to you and it's making sounds or doing things like chomping its teeth, you know, um, that's a warning. And it's, you know, giving you a sign that you need to get back and it's going to attack you or bluff charge you, you know. At no point did any bear come out. And they followed us. They followed us. A black bear, if it gave you a warning, it wouldn't keep following you unless it was hunting you. And it would come in closer to where I think and, we would have seen it. And bears don't like, they don't try to be stealthy. They just do whatever they want. Right. You would hear it if it was. We weren't, we weren't hearing as much as we should have, I guess you could say, if it was exactly. a bear. Exactly. Or a person or any other animal, really. And that's you guys can check that out on both our YouTubes. And um, actually, your you have your YouTube is uh, Swift Rage, and then you actually started a new one. Just Bigfoot, yeah. For Which just I'll be Bigfoot. posting a video soon. All right, and that is channel. Uh, it's Collar Kid, but Collar good luck kid. finding it. <laughs> I I tried to find it just like on like a normal computer. I couldn't find it. Well, you just started now, so it's going to be hard to search. But I will give. Yeah. The link in the description. I want you guys to go check him out. Just subscribe because he's going to have more content this year for sure because uh, we're doing stuff. We just, if you want to get into what kind of just happened. Uh, I got a couple more things I want to say before All right, that. Sweet. All right. So check out his uh, his channel, Swift Rage and um, Caller Kit. This is his new one. All right. Uh, after that happened, I think like a couple months later. I don't know. When did that happen? Do you remember? What month? That was in... Um, was it June? Uh, yeah, it was like uh, May or June. All right. So like a couple something, months later... June. Yeah, something, something like that. I went up I to think the, they, were, they happened in May, and then all, the last one was in June. Okay. Yeah, so a couple months later, me, Bill, and a couple other people went up to the UP... And he, Bill had this own area up there that secluded in the national forest. And this was the weekend. We went up like two days before the actual uh, conference of the UP fourth a annual Bigfoot conference right. up there. That's a uh, different conference. In, um, in Munising. That, yeah. I mean, that's where it is. It's not that any this year. Yeah, this year it's – um. Oh, man, I forgot the name of it. It's town. up by the bridge. I know it's that. It's right above the bridge. I think it's that town just above the bridge. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you guys can check it out. It's um, It'd probably be the fifth annual or something. Yeah, that's, I think that's maybe. Annual. I don't know. I, <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, I could it's check. Another Michigan actually. conference. It's the one above the bridge. It's happening in um, this summer. So you guys can check that out. You should be able to find it. James can probably look it up real fast right now. Real fast right now. Um, 
and they have some good guys uh, speakers going there too. You know, some some good uh, lineups, and it's always interesting. And it's a good way, if you guys. You know, never been to a conference. It's actually a good way to meet new people. And um, like me and James, we started collaborating and starting getting some good evidence, and we're still doing it, and we're got plans this uh, this this summer and all. You know, to do do uh, different stuff in different uh, areas and but uh, getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but just a little bit, yeah. Anyways, yeah, uh, Daniel, it's okay. uh doesn't say where. <laughs> it's just above the bridge. You guys can check it out. Uh, find the Facebook page. It's uh, Fifth Annual Michigan. Uh, oh, it's Saint Ignix. Saint Saint Ignis. Yes. It's that's the nice. one right above the bridge. You guys can find it. Check them out. All right. So what happened with uh, – Well, we had guys- this secluded area right by the water, and we were up there two days prior. So there mm-hmm. could have been other researchers out there, but we weren't like 100% sure. Right. Okay. <clears throat> and we're all by the campfire, and they're like – we're. I started doing calls and stuff. We started getting these weird things in return, which – I still don't know what are. I have my computer. I haven't really gone through them really, though. Unreleased yeah. evidence. It's hard to say what it is. It sounds like some of them could have been wolves, but most of them were very unclear. That sounded like one of them was really weird. It sounded like something I've never heard before. So interesting. interesting. Not even like Bigfoot. So huh. it that's and you, what's the what's the um place look like i mean it's obviously very it was, rugged up there well it was right next to a stream uh there was a a local that came by and was doing some fish and i think we asked him but he said he's never like had anything happen to him right which is weird all right well maybe you he know, just didn't want to say anything but yeah could be uh, who's these weirdos look for bigfoot really i'm not yeah gonna... <laughs> get all traumatized or something and uh yeah. i uh, think we're all around the campfire and everyone's like james do a call do a call and because like, yeah yeah <laughs> and i didn't want to do them because i didn't want to like stir them up and come in close <laughs> i didn't yeah. have the best tent either i had this like little four by four because i'm i didn't bring a good one <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that is it's intimidating you're out there in the middle of the woods and you, you know you don't know what's gonna happen yeah i didn't want to like lure them in so I, I did a couple more, and then they're like, you should be known as the caller kid. Your calls are so good, they wake up the forest and bring everything in. <laughs> yeah. Well, it has, actually. Because yeah. I remember you did a call when we were out that third time, and I made a whoop and stuff, too, and we had activity. So, um, Anyways, what? Uh, anything else happened that night after you made those calls? Uh, I don't think anything else happened, but... Apparently, after the the night that I left, something happened to Bill. I'm not sure mm-hmm. though. If you get him on here, maybe he'll tell you about it. Um, he, I, I, gosh, it's been such a it's been a couple months. I don't know if he uh, told that story on the when he was on. Oh, here, he did. Oh, I don't know if he told that one when he was on oh, here, but yeah, he did. Yeah, he told. Uh, he might have. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, it's been a while. Anyways, uh, all right. Apparently. So, uh, what I heard though is that they were in their tent and uh, mm-hmm. they heard like a, a rock or something or something was in the water making noise, like pretty close to their tent. And they're pretty scared, I guess you could say. Right. It's, you know, what's making the noise? It's like something through a rock or something. I don't know. I don't right. know the full story. So I'm not going to 100% say it. <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. Okay. So, uh, um, I know you. I know you want me to get to the thing. <laughs> I'm working on it. No, not thing. Uh, we might not even get enough time. It's fine. We can have you on again. Uh, I know you went. You you went up with Bill. Yeah. A few times. That's, that's why, why I, I do the recent one next. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The recent one. Yep. That was interesting. And you made a video of this, so yeah. it's actually on your channels. Yeah, I went there. When was that? I don't even know. It was, it was pretty recent, though. It was September, I think. September the last year. Yeah. Oh, it was, wait, uh, yeah, it's right here somewhere. Hold up. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly. Oh, September. 
Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, maybe. Oh, yep, you're right. Holy crap. Uh, yeah. September 21st, I went up there of 2019. Right. And I went up there one last time just to see the TP because I heard that they were like thinking about taking it down because it was in the middle of the trail. Right. So I wanted to get some more pictures of that just in case. And look at it a little bit more, see if we could find anything else. And I went up and met with this guy. What was his name? This is, this is important. Oh, no. It's all good. Hold on. I can find this. All right. So you went up back up to where Bill's area is at. And, um, I found it. Or around there, you know. And uh, I met with this guy named Rich. And he lives out there with, like, almost no electricity and no running water. And yeah. he has seen the Bigfoot three times while he was out in the area. The last time he saw her was uh, in 2016. And the closest she's got to him was about like 40 yards away. And he knows like the color of her eyes and how she sounds. And he estimates she's about seven foot eight. And he says about every fourth night he has heard her scream and she has distinct squeaky scream. Right. The individual has came around enough that he can recognize the same, the same individual. Right. And he said it's female. Right. So obviously yeah. got yeah, to get it. Sarah the Sasquatch. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, it's hanging around, you know, might as well give a nickname. It's a neighbor. Especially for him. So after that, we uh, we drive around for a little bit, and he takes me to an area, like, I don't know how far exactly away from his house, but we're, like, still in the area. And I do a couple calls, and it looked like there was something, like, I don't know, we... I, we, I kept hearing this thing that sounded like a helicopter and it wasn't like a machine or an ATV. And it just like it sounded like something was like beating like, like something like that. And that's what Bill thought. Maybe it was beating on its chest, but it kept happening for a long time. So we went hundred percent, but he said that out in that area where we're hearing, it was all like swamps and it couldn't have been like people. Right. <clears throat> Bill knows the area pretty, pretty well. So, Okay, so go on. I know you guys. Uh, and right, I think like right as we're about to leave, we hear I hear something on the the side where Bill is at. It sounds like something's being thrown, like or a stick falling. We we didn't know. It was really hard to tell, especially because it was dark. Right. But it was pretty close to us. You got this on audio, right? Yeah, I did, but it, it's not that clear, so. Well, it's hard, and plus, yeah. you know, who knows how distance, and obviously the further away, the harder it is for your equipment to pick up on it. So, but it, you, yeah. something's, something's happening. So then we go to this area. It's called the Dead Man Swamp or Dead Stream Swamp. I don't know. It's like one of the biggest swamps in Michigan, uh, I think, or something. Definitely I Michigan, I think, or most of the eastern half of the U.S., and this is over by an area where people have gone missing. And we we were going to go that way, but the road was, it was raining out and it was like, the road was pretty muddy. So we could have got stuck if we went that way. Yeah. So you guys we, are just driving out. Just so we just chilled by this oil driving. rig and listened. And I did one singular call <clears throat> and I got, <clears throat> I got, my voice is going. <laughs> I know we've been, we've been talking for a while. It's all right. Yeah, I got a a couple barred owls in return, and then like a minute and a half after I did my call, we hear uh, this weird this, a scream, and we weren't sure what it was. And Bill's been in the area for a long time, so he would he you think he'd know what it was? Right, he hunts and yeah. does all that there for many years. And I looked it up and like all I looked all the bird sounds in Michigan, try to compare it to that, and I couldn't find anything. The only thing that I did find was something called the little owl, and it's not native to Michigan. And the ending of the call did not sound like that call. Right. And my guess is it could have been a mimic, if anything. 
and it changed pitch three times as well. Yeah, because you actually got that audio, and you can hear it. I, I watched the video. I, I can't remember what the video is called. It's on uh, Swift Rage one, but it, uh, it's interesting for sure. You guys, you, it caught something, and it doesn't sound like an, an owl. Or it, it sounds odd for sure. And you, that whole area is, you know, wild. Yeah, and you really just keep crazy. driving and driving for hours and Someone hours. told me it could have been a fox, which is, I, I, I don't know, maybe. Because it did sound like it a little bit, but not really. I guess it depends. I, yeah. And yeah. then you, you were saying, or somebody did, that it sounded like a bird owl, like one of the calls they do. Yeah, it's uh, they do the who call. And basically, it's a chain of who's that they do in routine that they normally do the full set. It's three different calls. Um, and uh, they're very territorial, and they respond to each other, but uh, it didn't sound like it was making the full sets and stuff, and generally it's what they do. Um, so I think it was, you know, it was, it was definitely weird, you know. I've, I've heard the same little thing where, Sounds like the owl is making the thing, except for it's just, ooh, ooh. It's, it's big and it doesn't sound, it's not doing the full three um, owl, uh, I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. Where anyways, <sighs> you guys can look it up, look up that owl, look up some owl sounds, you know, you guys, if you guys are researching, you should do exactly what James did. You guys hear something out in the woods, go and try to figure out what it was. Play all the animal sounds you can. Listen, listen, listen. I've done it. I know you've done it. Uh, a good researcher should do it and exactly determine what, you know, and you get used to the sounds. So try to determine it, but you get used to what's actually making noise out there. All right. Um, probably got like one more. So I'm going to do something that yeah, happened recently. Over a little bit too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let me find it. All right. I think this one happened. Uh, so on November 24th, 2019, around, uh, I don't know, like 1 p.m., uh, I went hunting. Mm-hmm. And I was up in, uh, I don't know exactly. And I'm not like exactly, I'm not going to give a location, but like. Oh, it's fine. You don't have to. So uh, It was around like, I think Sanford area, I guess you could say. Okay. And I was on my uncle's property and we we're doing some hunting and I was in the blind. And since I already got my one deer, I was looking for, I was looking in the binoculars for uh, uh, something with antlers, <laughs> a buck basically. Right, right. And. I keep looking at this like one spot and it looked like something was on the ground and I couldn't like tell, but I think it turned out to be leaves. I was taking like pictures in the binoculars make cause I couldn't see that far with the binoculars as well. Mm-hmm. I didn't really have that great pair. And then I like looked to the right of that and there's this like weird thing here. Let me go to my, my notes here. It's awesome. You take these notes too. You yeah. get all that. You try to get you know, and people should. You should dot down, you know, the details of, of things. You know, I, I um, I'm pretty sure it wasn't there before, but like, I was looking at binoculars and I saw something. Uh, here, let me find it. Uh, oh no. <laughs> here, give me a minute. It's all good. It's all good. You know, it's just this is your first uh, live show, honestly, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I know. It's, well, actually, you went on the other one, but I think it's easier with multiple people. And um, but this is your first one-on-one um, telling of your encounters live. So it's all it's all good, man. All right. I peered a little bit over while I was in the binoculars, and I saw something weird, like a weird-looking tree, mm-hmm. and I, I was questioning it, and. Uh, all of a sudden, it began to move. Uh, I watched uh, as I saw a more of a narrow-looking thing come out behind the tree, and like it had, I saw a weird like log for its head, and it had a skinny branch with it. What, what, is, what the fuck did I say here? 
beeped. It had shiny white eyes. Shiny white eyes. Yes. So are you descri- you're describing a, a tree or what? What was it? You thought oh, it was a tree. Man. <laughs> it was a, uh, an actual tree stick man thing. Yeah, I saw like its arm come out from a tree, and the, really? the hand was like skinny as my arm, or a little bit oh, more skinny. It was, I was freaking out. You see the stick <laughs> I man. I was through the binoculars too. So okay, so you seen it, a? It was doesn't it, sound it real was, in my story. It really doesn't. <laughs> It's hard to, you know, you're just, it's hard to describe, you know, what's going on to, to people. You know, it's easy to think about and recollect, but this is kind of your first telling. Of, yeah. Uh, especially, you know, we are live and, you know, people are going to see this and stuff. So it's all right to be nervous and stuff. It's okay. It's going to get easier, you know. Um, so was it a humanoid or was it like a little, was it a humanoid arm reached out and then it, what, it came back in? No, it looked like a branch, like <laughs> like a branch, sticks. like it was skinny. Okay, I, I don't know. Wow. How to say what it was. Wow. Um. Uh. Uh. Tr- uh what are they called? Uh. Tree people, tree folk. You know, there's there there's there hasn't been videos for a while, but uh, there's some videos of basically trees that are alive and they walk around, right? And then they, they're trees. Uh, I don't think it was a tree though, because it came out behind a tree. That's why it was weird. Okay. So it was very weird, but it was something. Do you think it was a Sasquatch, or do you think it was? A, I, I think it was no. Stick Man, what you call it. I don't think it was stick Sasquatch. Man, which is, it is hard to describe because the only representation other than a um, goblin-like creature, very skinny, tall, um, uh, golem from the Twin Towers, or Lord of the Rings, basically is what it looks like. Or the Hobbit movies, he's after the ring. It looks like that, basically. A skinny humanoid thing. Uh, the one I seen was tall, about seven foot, but did it look like it had long arms? I, I, guess I don't know how tall it's exactly because I didn't want to go over there. <laughs> I know, yeah. I, I was actually scared that I like gathered my stuff up and left. <laughs> that, you know, and that is normal response. I had a gun on me, too, so like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, if you think about it, you're seeing stuff like that in the woods is not normal. You know, you know, that's not, it's not a deer. It's not a bear. You know, you're hunting in your um, uncle's property, I think you said, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's private property. Another person's not out there, especially when the family knows you're out hunting. You know? Well, he was out there with me too, but like he was right. farther away. Yeah, he's not going to be where you're, you're shooting yeah. like this, you know? So that is weird. That is that's weird, and I always tell people there's there's more than Bigfoot out there. There's other things, and I think there's um, modern people it's because modern people just don't go out in the woods as much as they used to. We hunt for the two weeks, a month, two months of the seasons, with the different uh, bows and guns and muzzle loaders, but that's it. Yeah, I, I watched it for like it, right. What was it called? I kept an eye on it while I was packing up. And as I was about to leave, I saw like a green thing, like an anomaly, I think, flash before my eyes. It was really weird. Really? So you Yeah. In the same area. Yeah, right as I was packing up in the blind. A flash of light or what? I, I don't know. It looked like an anomaly, just like a green flash just out of nowhere. Huh. That's interesting. I, you know, and maybe and someone else out sure there. It wasn't a, no, I said at first I thought it was if I thought it was a fly at first, but it wasn't a bug. So okay. I don't know what it could have been. <laughs> All right. So, but when I got out of the blind, the entity uh, disappeared. So hmm. I don't know. That's definitely a good title, an entity for sure, because uh, it's I don't know what it was. <laughs> some, some not normal that you should normally be seeing in the woods. Uh, you know, Bigfoot's, you know, abnormal to most people. And then, like, on my way back to the cabin, I turned around, like, in the opposite direction of where the blind was and down the trail. And it looked like I saw something behind a tree with my binoculars, but I, I didn't want to, like, look. I didn't want to go over there. Right. You were probably just want get heading out. It looked, I don't know what it was. It was weird. It was like a, a black, what's, what's it called? What did I say? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, Like, after this happened, though? Uh, 
after we're done hunting everything, uh, I asked if we could go over there and look in, at the area and see what's over there, see if I could debunk it. And I, I couldn't right. find it, anything that I could. Right. It wasn't like a, a tree branch swaying and the wind reaching out or something. Yeah, like. I couldn't find that, no. And that's great. That you it actually, actually looked like there was a bunch of pine trees in the area that I saw it. It was so it was a dark area, I guess you could say, but still, I, I was looking through binoculars and I saw it, so it was scary. Like, you know, there's only a number of things that can reach out and do that. And like you said, you went to the exact spot, there's trees swaying in the wind, you'd be able to debunk it. You were trying to debunk it. You know, what what is going on? What did you see? And that yeah. is that's a very good quality to do. I think that's all. Have, all right. And then I guess uh, is what happened recently, right? Yeah, that happened uh, November, November, almost December, basically. Okay, yep, then, yep. So it's been a couple months. Did you do anything in between uh, besides when you and me and Chad went out to Chad's no, area? Nothing else. Right, and you got you're busy with so. school and stuff, and you you know you get life. Life is busy. I mean, we all yeah are busy doing everything and it's hard to get out. I do. I do some stuff, just not Bigfoot. I do paranormal. Yes. Yeah, so you do other stuff. You do paranormal ghost hunting and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. Everyone check them out. Uh, man, I wish we had more time to talk about what recently happened, but I guess I mean, we could, if you want to, you yeah, go a little bit longer, about 15 minutes at tops. I, all right. All right. Do you have somewhere right. to be uh, family and stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Things like that. If you want me to talk about it, I can. Yeah. Talk it's not, about like a, not like a big thing. No, go ahead. Talk about it real quick. Uh, All right. We went to Chad's right. area, basically. Uh, Chad was gracious enough to invite us there, show us, very uh, show us what he used to do two years before he moved around. And uh, he was gifting uh, these uh, things uh, with apples and uh, – had in some different encounters out there. What'd you think when uh, we went in the area and uh, he was gifting, and then when we finally started? What I think about gifting, or no? What'd you think about you know when you seen the net that 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 mesh there and what he was doing? Did you think you know the way he was putting the apples in these trees? I think it was smart because animals, small animals like squirrels and raccoons, could easily get in there. But if it's on a branch that's small. And apples hanging on it, the branch would break first before the apple would come off. Yeah, especially for the um, raccoons or possums. But so, so I thought um, it was pretty smart. And no, none of the branches were broken when me and Chad went there after as well. It, nothing was yes. there. You guys had checked the uh, after this. We set the apples up, went at the area, did the whole day trip, which is uh, the scout trip video. I just came out. The two videos that just came out. You guys went back there. There was no apples. There's no broken – get a little ahead of ourselves, but there's no broken sticks, right? So Yeah. What do you think to the apples? I don't know. <laughs> Plus the other apples that were inside. Yeah, the, uh, those were possible to be taken by animals since they were close to the ground. Easier. Yeah. Yeah, and inside the tree trunk basically. Yep. Okay, so go on. What uh, – we went into – his, the nesting area, and you and Chad started uh, feeling the force, basically, right? Uh, well, it was over by his gifting area. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We pushed Apparently you back. Apparently, went too far in the area, and we started getting, like, anxiety, I guess you could say. And, yeah. like, I started breathing, like, really weird. I don't know you, right? what was going on, because I was filming and stuff, and Chad's explaining, I'm, I, you know, I'm filming and taking it all in, and I think at one point, you know, he's like, I don't go over there. And I was like, you want to go over there? And you're like, no. And I was like, yeah, I do. And I started going over there, starting to film it. And you, what what happened to you? What Describe the, the feeling. I don't know. I just got really bad anxiety, I guess. That's really what I could say. Okay. Yeah. And, and on the video, you guys can watch it. He, you know, you, you and Chad start feeling stuff, and you're kind of visibly distraught. In some of the scenes, I, I you know, I, I got. I mean, yeah. And you know, uh, we're 
we're out there. It is Chad's area. It is pretty thick, and it is kind of creepy feeling. But hey, nobody goes off trail apparently. So no. we were talking to some other people the, the day, a week after you were there, mm-hmm. and no, everyone just stays on trail. Right, you guys had talked to people, and there was a missing a lady who was looking yeah, for a missing dog. dog. Yeah, because there's a lot of missing dogs that go missing there. Yeah, that was weird. It is weird. Uh, okay, so basically we we uh, are finding tree structures there. What did you think of some of those? Uh, some of them were being balanced in weird ways. Uh, so if you guys could watch them, them all. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, let's let's just get to the the sighting. I guess you could say. Yeah, go ahead. You guys, it's all there. It's you know, tree structures are one thing. They were interesting for sure. Yeah, they were. They were hard to explain. Some of them, definitely. Um. So, we you were just filming us, I think, and we were hearing things, and I just kept looking in the direction of this like, these two trees like this, and I was looking in the middle of it, and there was a pine tree right over that way, and right below the pine tree, I was seeing something like moving, but I wasn't. I didn't see anything 100%. And it looked like something red was next to the tree, like ginger, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I debunked that later as something else, but it looked like something was moving in that area. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, you stop recording, we start listening, and like me and Chad at the same time, I guess you could say, I don't know if we said it at the same time, but we saw something black on the right side of the pine tree move to out of sight in the pine tree, right on the pine tree, I guess you could say, like very fast, like, whew. and it was just something black, like a black mass. We don't, so it, it, was, it so was very, bright. very weird. And then you're like, I'm going to go look for it. And then you find a footprint well, yeah, right, right next to it. I was so filming. We, we, it sounded like we could hear something creep in and actually there's some birds that, uh, got scared. I was literally filming the exact spot where you and Chad had seen it. You can see the two trees. Well, you can see the pine tree and the two trees where you were. You had your uh, viewpoint looking at. I am filming. I kid you not. I stopped filming for thirty seconds to a minute at most, and you both had seen it. And I start filming. You guys are you know wrecked and saying you guys seen it. You know you you seen something there and. I'm like, all right, well, let's go over there. I'm going to go over there. And I walk over there, and I get within about 20, I would say 20, 30 feet from that pine tree, and bam, I'm looking right down. Bam, there's that track right there. And uh, to me, I, and I kept looking around the area, and uh, I didn't go farther because, that, you know, I find in this track, and it looked good. And me, it, it was the best track I had seen since I've been out in the woods and I had just caught my eye because I knew this evidence is right here in front of me. If I go trying to chase after what they've just seen, I might not see anything. I don't know, you know, what's going to happen. If it's, you know, it could be long gone. I might not see anything. The chances of seeing a Bigfoot, you know, are, are slim, but you guys had seen it. But if you're chasing after one, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot. I think, you know, it's going to be running away. Yeah, it's, it's I, also like it's really thick woods too. I did, yeah, I didn't want to lose this, you know, lose it or have everyone step on it. And it, anyways, what do you think of it when I called you guys over there? Because first, before this, there was a lot that happened. You guys should watch the video. Uh, there was this on the other side where we're at, about the same distance. On the other side behind us, there was a place where all these impressions were. It wasn't like deer impressions, and it was in leaf litter, so you couldn't. There was no definition of like toes or anything, but it was solid, like foot mat, foot shaped um, impressions. And then it, it was like a tunnel where I would have to crawl through. We would have to crawl through. I'm guessing they're crawling through. Uh, we checked that out. We walked there, and then we started hearing it up, creep up, and then you had seen it. Walk over there. I, I find that track. It's very interesting. I find some other good impressions right around it. Not as defined, but they're very odd. They're not like deer. What was your first? Um, uh, well, I was trying to uh, debunk them, I guess you could say. Right, because we're like, you know, is this deer? What is this? You know. Yeah. But, and I tried to like compare it to my foot to see if it was bigger or not. See if maybe it's possible as a human, because there were pink flags out there. 
they looked like right. they were doing some research. So maybe it could have been a person that was there. Yeah, or they were taking down market trees to do it. But, you know, there's toes. So as a person, that guy take his boot off, take his socks off, and step right there. Plus, you guys yeah. had just seen something. Yeah. Now, what you and Chad had went back out there and yeah, stepped back spot. Yeah, we recreation of it, too. And you wanted to see what how big it was. So explain what happened. You guys went out uh, there. Well, I stayed in the spot where I saw it, and Chad went to the area where it was. Because Chad's tall. Chad's like six, seven. He said he was seven foot something, I'm pretty sure. Seven. He's up there. He's I think yeah, he's, he's under tall. seven, but he's tall. Yeah, so good representation. Anyways. And he goes to right where it is, and right where he's at, his head is just barely above right where I saw it. And I'm pretty sure the thing we saw was a little bit taller than his head. So it had to have been at least probably eight foot, probably, of where we saw the thing, the black mass. Yeah. Which I was remember. pretty cool because I was expecting it to be a lot smaller. Yeah. You know, when I first grilled you guys asking you questions, a question, you know, like, what was it? You know, what does it look like? You know, what, you know, you, Chad had said it looked to be about your size, maybe as tall as you. But when he went back there, the spot was actually dipped down. And so he was actually standing in a lower spot and it was actually much bigger. And you both obviously were amazed. But uh, what was it? Do you think it was a bear? Well, if it was a bear, it would be one of the first known ones in the area. And I guess it could have been a squirrel, but we would have seen it go up the tree. So it could have <laughs> yeah. been that. It could have been there's no people out there. So it had to have been Bigfoot. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe a different creature. I don't know. <laughs> right. Maybe it was another stick man. Or a dog man, you know. Who knows? Oh, yes. Yeah, dog man. You know, it could be. Uh, Chad has been in the air for a while. You know, he, he feels that they're Sasquatch for sure. He's had a good look at some toddler, I think he said. And, uh, you know, I, you know, it's, it is what it is. You know, you guys had seen something, walked over there, and found that an impression, that track. You know, if, in my opinion, if it was a black bear around there, I would have walked over there. I would have started hearing it, tr tr trampling through the woods or making. Um, first of all, I don't think a black bear would walk up on three people talking in the woods on purpose unless it's super hungry, starving, really wants to eat. But then we would have heard it. You know, and a person, the same thing. We would have heard it, especially when I walked right over there, you know, or you guys seen it and then it's, it, a person would have make noise, you'd be able to spot him behind the tree and say, hey man, what are you doing? I walked over there. I didn't see, I didn't see anything. Yeah. And, and then, uh, after we did the size comparison, uh, what did we do? We, I think we looked to look for more footprints and more, right more evidence uh, which i did working. find some more footprints which were pretty cool yeah some of them were a little bit difficult to make out but th there is something there yes now do you think it was a deer deer footprint no they they were about the size of my hand okay now Wait, what about not good. Hold up. <laughs> does it uh a bear i guess but what you guys had seen was standing up chad walked over there and was you know a lot bigger than a black bear even standing up Plus, black bears, we would have known if it was a black bear. That yeah. to us. That was been way too close for a bear to be. I would have been comfortable with Blair being. A bear would have been able to get on us like that if it was that close. Um, and they are very rare down this far south. It does happen, but it's so rare that it would be newsworthy, in fact. So, I mean, you know. Um. Uh, anything else before we wrap yeah, up? Yeah, there, there was one more thing. Um, as we were heading back to the uh, gifting area, we stopped and listened. And uh, <laughs> sorry. No, you're all right, bud. Um, we stopped and listened, and we were, we were hearing things moving around us. Mm. And I got some audio of some – I got a couple things I noticed that were different. They were like out of – I guess that didn't sound good. I don't know. How you say it. They were they were weird. I don't know. Abnormal sounding things around you. Yeah, 
that I, I captured on one of my videos when that was happening. So I got to awesome. go back and review that, see if it was anything else. Awesome. That's, that should be it. All right. <laughs> now it really happened. We haven't yeah. gone out since, so. Yeah, uh, we're planning on it pretty soon, hopefully. Uh, we're kind of waiting for the weather to break up a little bit because we uh, kind of want to keep the area a little – we don't want to disturb them too much. You know, it's a very odd place where they're at. So um, thanks for coming on. Yep. It's been awesome. I think, uh, you know, the more and more good out you're going to be on stuff because, uh, you know, we're get, it seems like we're getting good stuff when we go out. Uh Check out channel uh, Swift Rage. Check out his new channel, uh, Caller Kid. I'll put the link in the description. It'll be posted. I know you're going to be dropping a new video here soon on the Caller Kid. Yeah, hopefully Make soon. Sure. Hopefully soon. I know you're working on it. And uh, so that's it. Anything else? One last input? Nope, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining in, and thank you for watching the content. Please subscribe to the channel. And uh, join us on the uh, Facebook group, same as the channel, uh, YouTube channel's name, The Lost Cryptids Conservatory. Thank you guys so much. Hope you guys have a good evening. And see you next time.